Peace, love, and happiness, beautiful people. You are tuned in to another episode of Real Estate with B, where we discuss real estate topics to help get you in your new home. But first, if this is your first time to the channel, I need you to do a few things. I need you to hit the like, subscribe, and the share button, because it's imperative that we get this information out to you and your friends and family so that they can all achieve their goal of home ownership. So today we are going to talk about the home buying process. Now it's a quite extensive process because it is a big purchase. So you have several steps that you have to go through. The first thing that you wanna do when you are looking to purchase a property is get a pre-approval letter. This pre-approval letter is essentially coming from the lender that lets you know how much you qualify for. They're gonna go through all of your documents in terms of your bank statements, um, how much you're bringing in and in income. So they're going to look at your tax statements as well. And they're going to look at how much you have saved in other forms of income like stocks, bonds, and so forth. They're going to take all of that information, piece it together and issue you a pre-approval. Now that amount may be generous enough to where you can go purchase a multi-unit or just something smaller like a, um, a condo, which is fine depending on what your real estate goals are. But you do wanna communicate that to your lender as you are getting pre-approved. They'll let you know if you need to save a little bit more to get to the uh, type of property that you're trying to get to, or if you're right spot on. The next thing is you're gonna take that pre-approval letter and you're gonna to go to a realtor. That realtor is going to talk with you about what your must haves are in a property. What that looks like is they're going to go and say how many bedrooms you need. They're going to ask you how many bathrooms. Are you looking for a multi-level or are you looking for just a ranch type of home? Are you looking for a multi-unit to where you're trying to rent out one unit and so forth? They're going to ask you all of these different questions because essentially they're going to match what's on the market currently to your tastes and preferences. They're going to set up a search for you and that search is going to go directly to your email. You're going to pick what properties you want to see from there and you're going to set up a showing. Now, be mindful that sometimes people are still living in their properties, so you can't just pop up on them and you may need to give them 24 to 48 hour notice, uh, which is okay. And you want to also be mindful that not all of these properties are perfect, but that's what we have inspections for, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Once you pick the property that you are interested in purchasing, you are going to sit down with your realtor and you're going to come up with the offer. The offer is usually in tandem with the purchase price. And if the property is priced well, then you are pretty much going to offer a bona fide offer generally, or you're going to come in a little bit higher or a little bit lower, depending on what your goals are. So if it's a lot of people looking at the property, sometimes people like to go a little bit higher. Sometimes people like to go a little bit lower if the property needs a little bit more work and they're looking to put more uh, renovations in into it and so forth. Now, that offer is going to be written up by your realtor and it's going to be submitted on your behalf with your pre-approval. Once the seller looks over this offer, they're going to pretty much determine if they want to sell the property to you. And if it's accepted, they are looking to have the earnest money produced within 24 to 48 hours. You're going to submit this in a certified check, typically. You're going to take it to a title company or to the brokerage because some real estate brokerage firms do hold earnest money and you're going to submit it there. You're going to get a receipt from them saying that you have submitted earnest money towards this particular property. They're going to hold that earnest money until you guys are ready to close. Now, let's say that you are not interested in the property any longer at some point in the transaction. What happens to your earnest money? Well, you can submit a mutual cancellation letter and you will get your money back in most cases. If it is something to your fault, then the seller can hold the, keep the earnest money for themselves for loss of being on the market and so forth. Um, but you would definitely want to talk with your lender, um, not your lender, with your attorney about why you are canceling the transaction and to be in within your rights to get the money back. 
Now, once you submit your earnest money, you are going to set up a time for an inspection. And with this property inspection, you're going to look at the property's beautifulness and faults. So what that means is the inspector is going to look at your property from top to bottom or bottom to top. They're going to look at every single thing. They're going to check the electricity with the, uh, the sockets. They're going to test the roof to make sure that it's in good condition. They're going to look at the um, furnace and to make sure it's blowing correctly and heating and cooling correctly if you have an AC unit. They're gonna look at everything in this property. And if you're one of those people that are afraid of rodents, you're gonna wanna get some type and um, rodent um, inspection as well to make sure you don't have any holes coming into the property if you are afraid of rodent and pests or pest inspection is what I'm looking to say. They're gonna come out as well. Now, be mindful that each one of these inspections is out of pocket. So you're gonna have to pay this up front and not at the closing table. And it's okay to get multiple inspections. Like I do encourage you to get a plumbing inspection for sure, because a lot of places are a little bit older in their plumbing system. And you don't want to have that big pocket expense when you're purchasing a property and move in and find that your plumbing system isn't flushing properly. So you do want to get a plumbing inspection and then you want to get an overall inspection. And you also want to request for the roof to be certified by the seller and what that means is they will get a roof inspection done if they haven't done it so already and they will get the roof certified to say like hey it has about five more years left ten more years left or what have you they'll have these paperworks in order if it's a newer construction building though so you wouldn't have to worry about it but if it's not you definitely want to request it because it is imperative to know these type of things because you would hate to move your family into something that you have to put a lot of money into when you just saved all of this money to get in. The next phase is your attorney review phase. This is usually in tandem with your inspection. The attorney is going to go over the inspection report with you and they're going to do further negotiations with your realtor as well to see how much money you're going to ask for in terms of concessions or if you're going to ask the seller to fix certain things, which you can from an inspection report. Now, if the seller is refusing to fix certain things, you can go ahead and cancel the transaction and move on to another one. Or you can have them request a, a seller concession, which means they'll give you money at the closing table for fixing certain things. So if you have a broken window and they don't want to fix it, well, you can ask for credit for it and then you can fix it later on down the line. Now, your attorney review is also going to look at the title of the property to make sure it's not a cloud on title to make sure that seller can sell the actual property to you. They're going to look at the taxes and so forth. They're pretty much going to do their due diligence from an attorney standpoint to make sure you are getting a pretty solid property and they don't have to worry about anything later on down the line. Your title company is also doing this because they are doing a title history search on the property to make sure it is in tandem with what the seller is saying as well. Once that period has been finished, you are pretty much still under a mortgage contingency um, a uh, mortgage contingency part of the contract. What that means is you have to get a mortgage for this property unless you're paying cash, then this doesn't apply to you, but you have to get a mortgage for this property. Now with this mortgage is saying that if you cannot get the underwriting to uh, say that they're gonna furnish a loan for this property, then you can cancel the transaction and get your earnest money back. So let's say that the underwriter uh, sends out the appraisal, which is a part of that process, and they say that this actually came back lower than expected. We're gonna cancel the transaction because the property isn't worth what it's saying that it's worth. So then you'll get your earnest money back with the cancellation of this property that's not past the mortgage contingency rules. Let's say that it does. Well, then the property is getting underwriting. The appraisal pass is saying that it's worth that, if not more. Congratulations to you if it is worth more because that means you walk into equity. But if it's spot on, that just means that the underwriter is okay with writing a loan for this property. Now you get a loan to close disclosure which means you have three days to review it for the most part to see what the interest rates are to make sure that you can afford what the lender is saying that you can afford. Once you approve these documents, then you can go right on to the closing table. 
At the closing table, you are going to be signing lots and lots of documents transferring the ownership of that property from the seller to you. Your attorney should be present at this time because they are making sure that they are reading over all the documents. And it's best to have your lender present as well because they can also make sure that the loan goes through. So a best lender is going to be at the closing table with you and your realtor is going to be there for your support as well. And after you do all of that, you get the keys. Now, what are some things that happens in the middle of closing? <sighs> your loan cannot go through, meaning that you find that the property is actually not able to get a loan. And you shouldn't really get to the table at this point because the mortgage contingency is for that. But I have seen it happen from time to time, usually when it comes to hard money loans, though. Um, another thing can happen is that the um title records show that the property cannot be sold by the seller because it's in a foreclosure or whatever. Now, typically you're going to find that during the um, attorney review process, if your attorney is a great attorney or if your realtor is a great realtor as well, they can actually forewarn you like, hey, this is actually during a foreclosure. So we may have to go through the banking system as well. If that is the case, then there are some extra steps that you will have to take to get the, um, the property in your name as well and to purchase it. Um, but typically the, uh, the attorney and the title company will help with that and you wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, another thing is that you cannot have the money that you said. So let's say that you went out and spent the big, uh, made a big purchase. You bought a car in the middle of underwriting process. Well, that increased your DTI and the lender was okay with lending you the loan, loaning you the money for the property based on your DTI, meaning you say you made this much, you had this much debt, they're fine with that. But when you purchase something like furniture in the middle of a transaction or a car, you're actually increasing your debt by 10 to 12 to 20 to 30,000 or whatever. Once you do that, you can then make yourself ineligible for purchasing the property. So you want to avoid major purchases while under the, during the underwriting process. Once you close, you're fine. Go ahead, purchase the furniture, purchase the car, do whatever you want. You've gotten the property, but you don't want to do any of those things before closing on the property because it will mess up your numbers for the underwriting process. So that is actually one of the things I see the most. Um, you cannot have enough saved. So you got through this process and you had an emergency come up, let's say, and you had to put money from your savings account towards that. And now you get to the closing table, you don't have enough to close. Now, one of the ways to get around that is you can ask for a family member or a friend to loan you the money and they'll write a letter that the, they can submit to the underwriter saying that they've given you the money to purchase this property, which is called a gift. Now, that is usually what's going to help you. You don't want to um, spend too much from your savings. That's why you're supposed to have emergency savings and so forth and be really good about budgeting because you can knock yourself out from the closing table. Just because you had the money in the beginning and you don't have it in the end doesn't mean that they're still going to let you purchase because you don't have the money. But those are some things that you need to be aware of when it comes to at the closing table. Some things to avoid at the closing table or before getting to the closing table. But that is pretty much the whole process from start to finish. And then you move in after you close and get the keys. You celebrate. Uh, yeah, that's the purchasing process from start to finish. We have a very, very short episode today. If you found this information helpful, go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, and the share button and push this information out to everyone you know. Because like I said, I believe that everyone deserves the goal of home ownership and you do as well. <laughs>